Shalom, and a warm welcome to this online international midweek Wednesday service. We're so grateful that you're here, and your presence here is the evidence that you have an insatiable desire for the Word of God. And child of God, tonight is a reason for us to celebrate, because indeed we shall receive the Word of God this evening through God's friend, Prophet Emmanuel Makandiwa. We're so grateful that you could be a part of the broadcast. We encourage you right now, wherever you are, to prepare yourself to pray in your heart where you are, preparing yourself for this special moment where we will receive from Prophet Emmanuel Makandiwa. And surely tonight we shall delve deep into the Word of God not dwelling on rudimentary principles, but reaching unto perfection. So tonight, we encourage you to be expectant. How you know tonight is going to be a wonderful evening. And so continue to prepare yourself like we've said. Just pray in your heart and get yourself ready for what we're about to receive. Pastor Jukuni, it's, it's amazing to see the numbers of people that are engaged in their thousands that join us online. Indeed, Pastor SJ, it's, it's, it's really amazing, Pastor Koremba, that we have so many people viewing and watching mm -hmm. that hunger for the Word of God, just like what the voice said before yes. when he was actually preaching the other time. He highlighted that indeed in this season, the Lord has deposited that hunger for the Word of God and despite the circumstances surrounding our economies, yeah. our houses, our demographics and everything, yeah. people still find it necessary for them to tune in and to maintain such, such numbers yeah. for such times. I think it's just amazing and we really need to thank God yeah. for, for, for that deposit yes. and for the voice. Mm -hmm. Really indeed it is, it is amazing. It is, it because is. Because like you've said, considering the the times that we're in and some of the challenges that uh, a number of people are facing, uh, the level of commitment. It's amazing. And desire and yeah. love for the Word of God. Indeed. Is outstanding. You look at, you look at Africa, for example. Yes. We know that 90% of the economies is hand to mouth. Yeah. And just looking at the number of countries that are in lockdown and yes. the viewership that we continue to have, especially from Africa. Yes. You can look at a heart, you can see a heart, you can understand that mm. there's somebody who really wants to hear the word of God. Mm. And you would expect a shift of priorities considering the... Yes. Nobody really knows what's going to, what tomorrow holds Indeed. out there and, and, and you would expect them to change their priorities. But look at how people are tuning in and watching, mm. yearning to hear from the voice. Yes. And, and we... We are absolutely grateful to God for the word that we are getting. Indeed. This past Sunday, revealing Bible, politics, technology, and plagues, part two, the seed of the serpent. You know, it's, it's oh. mm. hermeneutics par excellence. You can never have such interpretation of scripture, except if somebody be from God and who ever thought that what we are going through now has a direct relationship with what happened in the garden at that time? Mm. Who would have been able to marry the two and derive meaning, not just ordinary meaning, but heavenly meaning mm. in terms of what is going on? Interpreting what is happening in these times. Exactly. There were some comments that were coming through and... Um, even as the voice of God was teaching on Sunday. And one individual said, it's like the prophet has a different Bible Indeed. from the Bible that we have. And another comment came through and an individual said that, all of a sudden, you begin to see things in the word of God that, are, that have always been there, but you never saw before because of the intensity of the light that the prophet then shines on those scriptures. For example, I, I think there, there were some of these examples were coming through concerning who told you 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. That you were naked. And I mean, these are, these are things that, it was in scripture all along. Yeah. But then there's a, there's a light that comes. There's excellence that comes in deciphering, in interpreting, in the revelation of the scripture. And all of a sudden, it's, it's a brand new picture that is painted. It's, it's almost as though you are walking in blindness. But the prophet comes and shines such a, an extremely bright light. You begin to see the vibrance of colors. You begin to see green and yellow and orange. And all of a sudden, this beautiful, amazing picture of understanding and revelation hits you. It's, it's dumbfounding. You know, it Pastor, really is. You know, Pastor Koramba, you, you realize that it is only after the voice has interpreted scripture that you feel like you kind of knew or understood a particular scripture. I believe that's the spirit that accompanies the voice when he ministers. Mm. When he reveals truths and mysteries hidden in the word of God, mm. it seems like it was there before, <laughs> or you kind of had an idea, but you only become enlightened after he speaks to you. And you can tell that you have a teaching priest. Mm. When the voice ministers, it is different from people just getting scripture and, and, and running over it. Mm. And after you run over it, people kind of have an idea of what you are trying to say. Mm. But then being able to marry two physical happenings in scripture, and then you bring that and you make it relevant or make meaning of today based on that particular scripture, mm. you begin to then wonder, should we ever open our mouth and try to interpret scripture if there is an interpretation of this magnitude? Because you then begin to understand that what you thought you knew may not have been truth, mm. especially when you are given this truth. Yes. We agree there is past and present truth. Mm. But this type of truth, if you're not careful, it will make you think that your truth was never the truth in the first place. <laughs> but then again, the truth that they had was a truth to begin with. <laughs> for that time. For that time, because yeah. now truth is coming. Now truth is coming. So we encourage you, as we are just taking a few moments, uh, waiting for you to get engaged and prepare yourself, please do ensure that your data package and your internet connection is strong and steady so that you are able to relax in the presence of God even as we enter with the voice of God, so that you can capture this entire service. Now, we, we are not sure how long it's going to be, but we desire it to even be all night, <laughs> if possible. But we encourage you to make sure that your, your data is ready, your internet is steady, so that you can capture everything that we're going to receive from the Lord this wonderful evening. Indeed, what says, yeah. For me, I think I, agree, I, I, I may agree with some people that are watching right now. I've come to understand that what we are hearing from the voice is the heart of God. And the fact that it is the heart of God, for me, I'm not really worried about the duration of the program or the length of the ministration because I want to understand what God is saying today. You know, when I was thinking about his ministration on Sunday, I got to a point where I said to myself, I think I now understand why the children of Issachar had to be noted in the Old Testament. Mm. It is because specifically the sons and daughters of the prophet in this time had to be noted as well. Mm. Because what we are getting is not just the Logos, it's the Rema as well. Mm. It's the word for today. Mm. And it is how we are supposed to respond and safeguard ourselves today. So indeed we are living in a time where we have an appreciation of the times, mm -hmm. probably more than the children of Issachar. Mm -hmm. And we really thank God for that. Yes. You know, as people share right now, yes. there's something that I, I was observing over the last couple of days. And you look at how certain people 
in probably positions of power, have been trying to either restrict or remove the ministrations of the voice, trying to impede our appreciation of the times. And you wonder, I'll give you an example, a very good example. Look at the number of countries that are chasing chloroquine in India today. Up to 40 countries, they're chasing that drug. Mm. Tell me, all these heads of states, all these governments, how can they go after a drug that does not work? Mm. Why are people focusing more on vaccines that are not yet in existence? Mm. And that is what The Voice is teaching us today. Mm. And believe you me, somebody can tell us that they are trying to give us life through administration of the word. But what more life can we get more than this? Yeah. What is there to say more than what is being said now? Mm. Isn't this the knowledge of the times? Isn't this life being given to us? Mm. Mm. This is the knowledge of the times. Exactly. Mm. Life indeed. So continue to prepare yourselves. Now we'd encourage you to share this stream. It's absolutely important that you share this light to those that you know. Now we can see through the comment sections those that are sharers. So we encourage you to, to please share this stream and what's about to happen this wonderful evening. We're so glad that you joined in uh, despite the times. Indeed. And we're so happy that you are logged on and you are ready and expectant to hear from the voice of God. Now, I believe we're all ready and we've prepared ourselves to receive from Prophet Emmanuel Makadeo. So we will introduce the man of God now. Father, we are so grateful for the light mm. that you are shining our way. This intensity of light, it's making us new. It's mm. making us different. Mm. Father, we, we can testify that we are not the same people that we were sure. before Sunday. And an, an amazing thing is being done by the word that you're giving us and the truth that you're giving us. It feels as though each moment we ponder on it, we think on it. We begin to feel transformation even happening in our physical bodies. Mm. Mm. We know that when we walk outside and we interact with the world, we feel the difference, we see the difference. Wow. We want to thank you so much, Father. Amazing. <laughs> and Father, today we are ready <laughs> for more. That Again, we have to thank God each time we come live, we have to always remember to appreciate God for that chance. It's a chance, it's an opportunity. And also I would like to thank those of you that are part of this uh, broadcast. You have set aside this moment, which to me is a sign that you know where to place value and you are aware of what matters the most at this given moment. And I don't take this lightly. It is an amazing thing having people tuning in when they realize that you are life. It is an appreciation of a gift. And I thank God for giving me people like you. People that have an understanding of God's intentions. You have said it, pastors, that uh, we are in a very uh, sensitive uh, moment. It's a critical moment in terms of uh, the economics of the uh, nations where most people have stopped working weeks and weeks ago and they don't have any other source of income and yet with the little money that is left they invest that in the world making sure that their phones are juiced up and their internet is active 
So that whenever God comes and he brings a word, they are ready to receive it. And that's an investment. That's an investment. You're actually investing into yourself. Therefore, you are becoming better and better. Thank you. Yes, tonight we... Um, have a word from God. And uh, again, I would like to appreciate our team. Apart from you pastors, we have a wonderful team that is always making this program uh, possible. And they are sacrificing a lot. And we really want to thank and to appreciate our Christ TV crew. Thank you so much, guys, for such a wonderful job. Thank you. You know, thousands and upon thousands of people are just waiting to hear when, 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 when is the word coming? When is the word coming? Even after delivering the word, they're already asking, when is the word coming back? <laughs> Indeed. So Indeed. these guys are doing a wonderful job. And I thank God for them. I thank God for you that are watching. And I thank God for you, pastors. Thank you so much. Tonight, I would like to talk to you about... I know it is a very strange topic, but I would like to work on that and, and, and make sure that apart from sharing information with the people, I believe that he's... Um, an impartation that is likely to take place if I am properly understood. Wow. And I'm going to be sharing on the two anointings. Wow. The two anointings. I know it may not sound right to call two different anointings, anointings. It would make more sense just to call it an anointing. But there are two different types of anointings that you and I require. Uh, I've once shared concerning the the blessing of God, what the blessing does when it is placed upon a person, an individual. And I explained how the blessing of God is transferred. Not when money is given to you, but when a word is spoken over you. Because the Bible declares the formula when God blessed them, he said. So you look at where exactly men got the blessing from God. It was when God spoke. He spoke. God blessed them saying. So when God is saying, someone is getting blessed. So this broadcast is all about saying. So it is all about what? Blessing. Blessing somebody. Mm. So that's how a blessing is transferred by statements, declarations, utterances, pronouncements over individuals or even over places. That's how you transfer a blessing. But then I said something very critical, which I would want to repeat again tonight. That when you also receive an anointing, um, it is also the placing of the, the super upon the natural. Mm. 
because the anointing is really super. Mm. It is bigger, it is greater, it is more powerful than the natural. So when you get anointed, it means there is something being done on you that gives you an advantage mm. over all the physical and even the natural limitations. When we talk about the supernatural, we are talking about that which is beyond the natural. So the supernatural is a combination of two words, super and the natural. But how do you bring about such an activity in your life where you can have both the supernatural and the natural happening? that calls for an anointing. Wow. Um, mm. When you place the super upon the natural, what you get as a result of that mixture is a supernatural. In a supernatural life, you can have supernatural experiences. You can have supernatural uh, uh, discussions mm. with the divine. Yes, but there is an anointing that is responsible for all that. So I'm going to talk about two different anointings. Two. Some people, they have one of those two. Some, they have both. Some, they have none. But you'll understand as we go that it is a must that you get one of these two different anointings. And I'll explain why. And it is more important that you even get both, how dangerous again it is for you to only have one of the two. The disadvantages, how even that one anointing that you have will begin to work against itself mm. if it doesn't have the other supporting anointing. Now, since you are a spirit and then you reside in a physical body, that's your habitation. God placed you in a body that is physical. Now, there is an anointing for both. There is an anointing for the flesh and there is an anointing for the spirit man. Both require an anointing for them to mm. function well. Mm. Before we get to the definition of the anointing, I don't know whether I'm going to be able to get to that today, but it, it is important that we, we look at what the anointing does. Is it an advantage to have the anointing? Because most people are actually asking me, um, we, have, we have watched you Minister, healing the sick, setting the captives free. What kind of an anointing is that? I've had several men of God calling me, wanting to also receive of that same anointing. Because they think that it is an anointing that heals the sick. Mm -hmm. They think that the anointing is responsible for the miracles that they see happening. But I'll explain to you exactly what it is that heals the sick, wow. which is not the anointing. This is going to sound like the minister's material. It is because everyone listening to me is a minister. You're going to be found serving God in one way or the other, which then makes you a minister. And then you must then be qualified by the anointing of God for you to fully function. Now, somebody, because they don't understand the difference between these two anointings, someone hears this and then quickly they go offline because he's saying this has everything to do with church things. I don't believe in that. But you realize as we go that 
there is an anointing that you require, even if you are never going to visit a church. Mm. There is an anointing that you need, even if you are never going to be born again. Mm. As long as you are going to become influential, as long as you are going to have a responsibility upon your shoulders, there is an anointing that is required by you, even without you having to go to church, whether you are never going to be born again, but it is a must that you get that particular anointing. <laughs> it has nothing to do with you having a relationship with God. It helps you to become significant. So I'll talk about that. So you being a spirit, staying in a body that is physical, there is an anointing, an allocation of the anointing that is placed by God upon your physical body and upon the spirit, which is you. So what I'll try to present here is the mystery of the anointing. It's a mystery really, because mm. not many people have been able to understand what the anointing is and even what the anointing does. Had we known the function of the anointing would have been better people today than we are. Okay. Jesus said something in the book of Luke concerning the anointing that was upon his life in chapter 4, verse number 18. When you look at that, you begin to understand the need for you to have the anointing in mm. both places. Mm. Father, I found the scripture. Yes. Luke chapter 4, verse 18. Verse number 18, yes. The Spirit of the Lord mm. is upon me mm. because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. You see? He's saying, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. I would want you people to understand what Jesus is saying. There is a part of him that is speaking, and there is a part of him that is silent quiet because remember Jesus was both God and man yes so whenever Jesus speaks you must be very very careful which part of him mm -hmm. is speaking to you now even when he is hungry you must also understand which part of him is hungry lest you say that God became hungry mm when he was afraid of that which he feared the most, death, mm. you must be very careful which part of him was afraid of death, lest you say God was afraid. Mm. Okay? Yes. So when he's speaking, What you are hearing, you must always investigate where exactly the word is coming from. Is it the man? Mm. Is it the God? So when you hear God, Jesus, declaring that the spirit of the Lord is upon me, because the way he was designed is the same way that you were designed. So be very careful. That's a very important point that I've just highlighted there. Now you have Jesus 
walking into the temple and then he took the scroll, he opened the book of Isaiah and then he declared what was written from the prophet. Yes. Then he says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. He never waited for somebody else to declare that. Mm. He knew. So when he opened the book, what he was looking for from the book of the prophet was the portion that had something to do with himself. Mm. That is why sometimes some of the revelations that I share with people, they seem to be very crazy because God has given me the grace to find myself in scriptures. Wow. Hey. He didn't read about anything else from the book of Isaiah. He went mm. to a place where it was written concerning him. Mm. This is why when people are going to school, when you are reading a book, any literature that you can come across, are you able to locate yourself within the literature? So education is not all about the accumulation of knowledge. Don't read any book that doesn't help you read yourself. Wow. Can you find yourself in the book? Mm -hmm. Then he read, he looked for himself and he found himself in the book. Wow. I know we've got too many educated people listening to me tonight. I'll, I'll come to you very soon and talk about something. Have you been able to find yourself at the university? No. What exactly were you looking for? Is it about mathematics? Mm. Is it about physics? Was it just about geography? Have you discovered yourself mm. within the syllabus, the topics that you chose in your life? Then he said, let me, let, me, let me leave that for now. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Who is saying that? Of the two of him, who is saying that? Hmm. Hear this. Had he said, the spirit of God is upon me. There was going to be a very serious confusion there. But he's saying the Spirit of the Lord. And we know that God the Father is not the Lord. The Lord is Jesus. And Jesus is the Lord. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So now having Jesus declaring that the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, that doesn't make sense. If the Lord is Jesus and Jesus is the Lord, then you can't have Jesus declaring that the spirit of Jesus is upon me. So he has to say Lord. Mm. No, he doesn't have to say Lord because he is the Lord. <laughs> you can't have the Lord saying the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Mm. The one who is saying the spirit of the Lord is upon me is not the Lord. <laughs> now, Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you have the Lord in a human body. Mm. And then you are listening to the flesh, declaring that the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Now, it's not Jesus declaring that God the Father is upon me. No, it is the flesh. Mm. Mm declaring that the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Mm. I'm a carrier of the spirit of the Lord. I'm the container that contains the spirit mm. of the Lord. I have Jesus within me. It is the confession by the flesh. But when you look for the Lord, you are searching for him. He is upon me. Mm. Thus, the flesh, the human element, the human part mm. of him. And at that time, the Lord was quiet. Who was speaking? The one speaking there was the flesh, declaring that the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Now, so the, I want you to see something here. There is an overlay of the spirit 
where you have the spirit, like I explained the how the Ark of the Covenant was created. Yes, Father. Having the gold inside, mm. and also having the same gold outside. Yes. And then having the shittim hood in between, sandwiched between the divine. Yes. Mm. And we said the hood represents humanity. humanity. And then we said the gold represents what? Divinity. 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 Right. So when you have the spirit within the physical body, the spirit must be given an opportunity to run over so that you end up having the spirit within and the spirit without. Mm -hmm. Now, when that happens, now you have your cup running over. Thou anointest my head with oil, mm. and my cup runneth over, my vessel, mm. the container, mm. now has oil within wow. and oil without. Wow. Wow. So there is a development of the spirit man that helps him grow and eventually take over the whole being that you can now have your flesh declaring that the spirit of God, mm. referring to the spirit man, mm. is upon me. The flesh can declare that. Wow. So when Jesus is saying, the spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me, I'll explain that part. Mm. How did the spirit of the Lord anoint you? Mm. How did the spirit of the Lord anoint you? If Jesus in the flesh needed an anointing, we need the anointing. Yes. yes. I'm trying to build my case here. Please proceed. The fact that you are a spirit does not mean that you are exempted from having the anointing. You must still have the anointing. Okay. I, I remember some time, it was in um, January, and uh, on the 3rd of January, In fact, it was on the 4th because we, we, it was now around 2 a.m. So that was on a Saturday. But there was a prayer that I was doing during the, that Friday, the 3rd of January, and then went to bed around 2 a.m. Not because I was ready to sleep, but because I was advised to go and have a rest. So I said, ah, let me go and rest because I'm being advised to go and rest. Not because I was feeling tired, but I was being advised to go and rest. So from the third, now we are into the fourth of January. Around 2 a.m. I'm going to bed and then uh, the moment my body hits the bed, suddenly the person, the me, the spirit, immediately came out. Now I'm taken to this place. Then right before me, I had a voice that said to me, lift up the bucket. And then suddenly there was a bucket in my hand. And I realized there was water, but the water in the bucket wasn't much. Then the voice that I had said to me, the water that you have in the bucket 
is only enough for one plant or one tree so you can only water of the two trees one because that is what is enough for the water that you have you can only water one plant or one tree so i was holding the bucket it wasn't full then i said what what tree are you talking about you know the moment he mentioned trees there were two trees standing before me but very very tender then i kept on holding on to my bucket i said but these trees they look different to me and he said indeed the trees are two different trees but she can only water one and i kept on holding on to my bucket i said i would want to have an understanding of the two trees so that i know which one needs to be watered then suddenly a man appeared and he stood right next to me and he began to explain to me the meaning of the two trees he, both of them were tender but they were different in terms of the you you look at the color of the leaves they were different then he told me that this tree that you see over here is the prophecy that you gave concerning the current pandemic and outbreak that you have heard of taking place in China now during that time it had not yet started really spreading everywhere and he said to me this tree is the prophecy and i said how about this other tree he said this is the prayer you prophesied about it and you made the people to pray about it so now i began to get an understanding he said to me whatever you water is what will flourish mm. so i have a bucket of water and the water is not sufficient i've just been told that you, the water you have can only water one of the two trees now i have my prophecy and i have the prayer by the saints i made them to pray yes. so already you have two things that i would want you people to see right before me and these trees are actually a contradiction to each other and i'm being asked to water one so i said to the man standing next to me what happens if i water the prophecy he said to me it is the prophecy that then comes to pass exactly as you declared it and i said what if i water the the prayer you will have the prayer prevailing over the prophecy mm. so right there i'm just giving you some personal experiences that you would normally have as a prophet So I took the bucket, poured all the water upon the prayer tree. This is why after that I then began to emphasize more on prayer. You know, after that revelation I knew what was going to happen. That one of the two has to die. but that ability that opportunity was given to me to choose what to water now you have a prophet coming now every time i'm pushing people into prayer let's pray let's pray let's pray let's pray let's pray let's pray because i've just been told what is going to prevail i've made a choice so i i i i can be a fool to then want to see the fulfillment of the prophecy exactly as i saw it i wouldn't want people to get in billions dying of something that prayer can prevent 
I hope you are following this. Yes. They're coming yes, back to the yes, anointing. Yes. yes. Okay. So, you remember some time uh, back when I mentioned about the United States of America. And I said, we need to pray. Yes, sir. You remember? Yes, sir. That was another life that we had. I said, it's very, very critical that we, we pray for America. For the United States. And I told you some of the reasons why. And I said, because there is a very big mistake. Because whatever he announced as the medication, the potential medication for this disease, they are calling it a virus. But I, I call it a plague. Mm. Yes. Mm. And I said what he did was against the plan. Yes, one. Because no one should be talking of a cure yes, at this point. No one should be talking of a treatment at this point. Yes, one. And he went on to make an announcement yes, sir. that was against the plan. Because we shouldn't be talking of any cure. Mm. Because we have to come later with the cure. Then he went on to make an announcement. He was against their strategy. Yes. I wouldn't just come and say, let's pray for him. Let's pray for that country. Yes, sir. If the country is not the determining factor yes. okay. in this whole plan, mm. Mm. so when you are when you have chosen prayer, you have then to be led by the Spirit on what to pray for. Mm. Your focus has to be on everything that requires prayer. Yes, making sure that everything according to the tree mm. gets disturbed or destroyed by the prayer. You must have the two trees fighting each other. Mm. So you, you just have to keep on praying that he doesn't lose the battle. Because mm. hey. I told you if mm. he loses the battle, mm. then we have all lost the battle. Mm. What do I mean by that? Uh, <sighs> he came back some few days ago and he mentioned something, some proposals. as an option that what if we try this what if we try that i hope you guys you watch that yes yes father and whoever was sitting next to him whether that was a doctor or a scientist i don't know mm. but the woman was not in agreement mm. she strongly disagreed with yes. his recommendation yes the leader was recommending mm. something mm. and then she wasn't agreeing with what, what he was saying. And that has become, his greatest attack is being attacked mm. because of those utterances, because though he came back to say, I was just joking. But what could have really happened? Mm. Yes, Father. Is he, giving up on his stance mm. after having ordered millions mm. of chloroquine mm. after having declared even doctors coming out to say this thing is treating the COVID-19 mm. mm. 
Now having to come back and suggest any other alternative. Mm. Is he coming back to say that is no longer effective, the chloroquine? Mm. Or was that statement staged? Mm. So that by saying something okay. which is far away from science, then you end up undermining his first declaration that we have just found the treatment, which was chloroquine. Mm. Mm. Is he giving up? Mm. Is it a way of discrediting mm. his previous utterances? Mm. Or why did I say, let's pray? for that country. I don't want to comment on that, but let me just uh, dwell much on the anointing. <laughs> Please. But we have to keep on praying for all the leaders. Yes. Leaders, they, they, they require our prayers for them to really make it for them to make the right decisions. If we don't pray for them, they will lose it. And I believe that whoever also is working closer to the leaders who are in positions of making decisions, those people also must be prayed for. Mm. Because you don't want a situation where you have the person, the armor bearer, mm. the assistant, medically close to people of influence, mm -hmm. having to do experiments on people that matter. Mm. Okay. Mm. Leaders must learn to verify everything. They drink everything, they eat. Mm. Any treatment they get before going public. Because you don't want to be mad to say something that you're not saying. You don't want to have something within you saying something that you are not saying. Mm. That's a very loaded statement. Indeed. Whatever you drink, whatever you eat, whatever injection you get before you get to the podium, mm. you must be very, very careful. But you are not made to say certain things by those that want to see you out of power. Mm. So many things can make individuals hallucinate. Mm -hmm. I, I don't want to say much. Mm -hmm. Because certain utterances and certain statements can even cost. They can actually cost your position. This is why I want you people to understand what I was teaching on certain technologies, there are chemicals available on the planet that can tamper with your decision making. Mm. And people don't want to believe that. You can be made to do things without you having to consult your free will. That's where we are now oh, my. when it comes to technology. Mm. Anyway, we are talking about the prophecy that I gave and the prayer, and I was asked to water only one of the two trees. Father, please allow me to just say thank you. Mm -hmm. Father, you have been 
you have been consistent with this prayer point, Father. Mm. Father, remember years back when this new administration came in in that country, you made a strong highlight mm. and you told us that we must pray mm. for that nation. And Father, we thank you, thank you for, for giving us a reminder once more. Yes. And for continuing to press us into that, Father. Mm. To continue to pray, Father. Mm. We're so grateful. Thank mm. you for continuing to cover that nation. Yes. Thank you, Father. And you remember during that prophecy, I said there is a fragrance mm. in that house. Yes. Yes, Father. <laughs> yes, Father. Yes, Father. You spoke about the fragrance. It's the fragrance. Yes, Father. Okay. Of the outgoing administration. Yes, Father. And then we said we need to pray for his survival, the one right now in position. Yes, Father. Mm. Mm. Okay. Anyway, you need an anointing for your flesh. You need an anointing for the spirit. There is need for an anointing upon your flesh. Mm. And there is need for an anointing upon you, mm. the spirit. Now, imagine I'm about to sleep and then something came out of me, went to a place and something was done and my physical body wasn't present there. Now, what helps your spirit? to be active during those activities where your flesh is not involved. That's an anointing upon the spirit. No. Oh, wow. mm. mm. Now, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Mm -hmm. Who is saying the spirit of the Lord is upon me? It's the flesh. The flesh. The flesh. And it's a confession by the flesh that the flesh now has the spirit mm. upon mm. it. Mm. And the flesh is saying, he has anointed me to preach because what you had preaching in Israel was a physical Jesus. They could interact with him. Yes. Mm. To set at liberty mm. Mm. those that are oppressed. So Jesus would preach physically, would do miracles. People would actually hold him physically and miracles would take place. Mm. Why? Because the spirit of the Lord was upon Tony. the man. The flesh. The flesh. Wow. Now, so you must develop in terms of anointing until your flesh can also mm. confirm that. But now, let's say the spirit within you is the Lord. Mm. You must get to that place where you now have your flesh confirming that now the spirit mm. of God, because you are God. Jesus said, you are gods. Mm -hmm. You are gods. Yes, you are gods. So the God within must eventually become the God upon and the God outside of the flesh. Wow. Now follow something here, very critical. Acts chapter number 10, verse 38. I want to show you the mystery of the anointing. Mm. 10 verse number 38 talks about how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth Thank you, Father. with the Holy Ghost and with power. Mm. Acts 10 verse 38. Mm. How God anointed Jesus. Who was anointed? Jesus. Jesus. With what? Of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost <laughs> and with power. Ha! Huh. The one anointed was Jesus. That's one. Now, but the Jesus that was anointed was the Jesus of Nazareth. There is a difference. When he's called Jesus of Nazareth, you must understand. <laughs> Thank you, Father. 
This is the one that came from Nazareth. Mm. And that one was anointed. I want you to see something right from the beginning of that verse. Mm. What is the first word? How? How? So before you get to the anointing, you have to look at the how part. Let me yes. explain the how part yes. to you. Yes. How God anointed. How God anointed. It doesn't start by saying God anointed. Mm. How God anointed. The how part is what most people are missing. They don't know how God anoints. Indeed, Father. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. Mm. Look at this. The anointing is not the oil. Okay. <laughs> Mm. Though we call it the anointing oil. oil. Mm. But the anointing is not the oil. Though the meaning of the anointing, in some sense, mm. covers the area of smearing mm -hmm. or spreading. Mm. Okay. But the oil in itself is not the anointing. The oil is what we use to anoint. Mm. But it is not the actual anointing. Before I explain to you what is happening, the how part. Yes, sir. Let me give you very straightforward illustration mm. a very straightforward illustration yes, you can have you see these three vessels here yes. you can have the oil the cooking oil in here mm -hmm. and you can also have the cooking oil in here mm -hmm. and you can have the cooking oil in here made up of the same ingredients now, and then I take one of the three mm. and then I use it to anoint an individual and miracles begin to happen. Mm. People begin to recover. Yes. Things begin to happen. Yes. People are ushered into dimensions that are very, very strange yes. by the anointing. Now, the rest of the oils can still remain in the kitchen and can be used for other purposes. Mm -hmm. And you don't have anything supernatural happening in the kitchen. Okay. Here's the difference. Now this one, I've separated it from the rest of the oils. When I use this one, I can achieve the supernatural. Yes. But when I use this one, I can achieve the natural, which is frying the eggs and so on. Okay. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. What has made this oil different from this oil? If the oil in itself is the anointing, mm -hmm. what makes the anointing oil, the anointing oil mm. is the anointing upon the oil. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay. When I take the oil and I apply the oil on you, yes, as in anointing you, yes, I'm anointing you with oil. <laughs> But the oil has to be anointed for it to properly anoint. Mm -hmm. mm. Because it is the anointing placed upon this oil that makes this oil different from this oil. Mm. Don't lose me here because the, the, this is the foundation of what I'm going to be sharing with you now. 
difference between this oil and this oil is the anointing, yes. not oil. Mm -hmm. The oil is the same, but the difference is in the anointing placed into the oil. Mm -hmm. So for the anointing oil to become the anointing oil, something must have anointed the oil. Yes. The anointing oil is the anointing oil. Because the oil has been anointed by something else that is not oil. Mm. 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 Okay. <laughs> what makes the anointing oil? The anointing oil. Mm -hmm. It is the anointing placed upon the oil. Mm. And that anointing is not the oil. Mm. For the anointing to become the anointing oil, being separated from the cooking oil, mm -hmm. the oil has to be anointed first. And what is used to anoint the oil is not the oil. Mm. So if you say anointing means smearing, it doesn't start from here mm. when the oil is being smeared on you. Mm. There must be something else smeared upon the oil for the anointing to become the anointing oil. Wow. It has to be anointed before it anoints. No. I don't know, Pastor, if what I'm saying is making sense. It's making it is, a lot it of is. sense for me. It is. <laughs> is this making sense, right? It's making sense for me. <laughs> my, my, my question would be, by definition, mm -hmm. when we talk about somebody being anointed mm -hmm. and they place the aspect of smearing mm -hmm. yes. to define the anointing, the anointing yes. and yet the oil can be smeared without the anointing. It can be smeared without the anointing. It has to be smeared with the anointing. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It has to be smeared with, with the anointing. anointing. But the anointing that smears the oil is not the oil. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay? Then, mm. okay, get this now. Mm. Why I'm saying that? It is because of the scripture that you have just read. There is something there that you are not hearing. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with what? With the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is a person. The Holy Ghost is a person. Yes, ma'am. Are you following this? Yes, ma'am. And a person was used to anoint the medium used by the Father to anoint Jesus of Nazareth was not oil. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with, not oil, the Holy Ghost, the person. Mm. So you can have a person anointed, yet there's never been oil poured Upon on his head. Yeah. Because when I get a hold of this oil, I have to have a way of having my personality smeared upon the oil. Mm. Therefore, making this cooking oil anointing. anointing oil. The oil has to be anointed by a personality mm. for the oil then to become an anointing oil which can be used for anointing people. Mm. I, I, want, I want us to follow this. So the smearing part that you are bringing in, mm. it's a personality eh. where I have to separate this oil mm. from the cooking oil mm. and then I invest myself, saturate myself. Mm. My person has to be embedded within the oil. So this oil, before it anoints the king, it has to be anointed by the person. The person has to anoint the oil before the oil anoints the king. Yes, ma'am. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth, not with oil, but with the Holy, Holy Ghost. Ghost. Mm. So I'm saying this because many Christians, they don't realize that Jesus is the Christ. The Christ doesn't all, only mean the anointed. Christ also means the anointing. So when you get born again <laughs> and you receive him, 
by receiving the person, you have actually received the anointing. Wow. But there's no any use of oil mm. at new birth. All you receive is the person of Jesus and having him upon you. You are anointed. Wow. Are, are you following me? Yes. We're following. Mm. You are anointed. Mm. So God is not only using things to anoint things. God is also using people, individuals, mm. as a medium of anointing. So you can have a man of God, walk with him, and he never anoints you with oil. Mm. But having him in your life, you have the actual anointing because he is the person that anoints any medium. Mm. For the oil, okay, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. I want to get to something. I don't want to dwell much on this one. Go, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth, not with oil, but with the Holy mm. Ghost. And with power. So when you have Jesus placed upon you, he is the Christ, the yes. anointing. So you can never say to me that you're not anointed if you're born again. Mm. You're anointed. Mm. Okay. This oil is made anointing oil by the anointing <laughs> of the person. Unless I anoint the oil, Mm. The oil is not anointed, and the oil cannot anoint, especially when it comes to achieving the supernatural. It can't. So the oil cannot be at the anointing if it relies on my anointing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I make the oil anointed. anointed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when I then put oil upon you, mm -hmm. it is the power that I've placed within the oil mm -hmm that is now coming to you as the anointing, but it's not the oil that is the anointing. Mm -hmm. The oil relies on the anointing of the person for it to become the anointed oil or the anointing oil. Mm. So we have the grace given to us by God to anoint things wow. and make things anointed, mm. not just the oil. But why I'm touching on that, it is because of where I'm going now. So let's sit properly and just relax. Okay. Why was there any need mm -hmm. for kings to be anointed in the Bible? <laughs> Why is it that every king needed to be anointed? Yeah. You would get into every prophet's house, what you would see there was an anointing oil. Priests were anointed. Even sick people were anointed. Kings were anointed. Prophets were anointed in the Bible. And they would use oil. Why anoint a person? Now, when you are anointed, you are given an entitlement. An anointing is an authorization. Mm. There are things that you are not allowed to do unless oil touches you, unless the anointing touches you. Mm. Everything you try to do, come back with your PhD from the university, any university of your choice. Mm. Still there are things that you're not going to be able to achieve mm. unless you are confirmed by the anointing. Wow. I want to touch on something very critical there. Oh, yes. 
If you study Leviticus chapter number 7, verse 34 and 35. Leviticus. You know you're, you're going to encounter an amazing text. What God has to say concerning his people, the priests. What is he saying? The book of Leviticus, chapter 7, mm -hmm. verse 34 and verse 34 and 35. 35. Yes. For the wave, breast, and the heave shoulder mm. have I taken of the children of Israel mm. from off the sacrifices of their peace offerings. Maybe you can start from verse 33 or so. Verse 33, mm. ye among the sons of Aaron that offereth the blood of the peace offerings and the fat shall have the right shoulder for his part. 34, for the wave breast and the heave shoulder have I taken of the children of Israel from off the sacrifices of their peace offerings and have given them unto Aaron the priest and unto his sons by a statute forever from among the children of Israel. This is the portion of... This is mm. the portion mm. of what? Of the anointing of Aaron. This is the portion, portion of the anointing, anointing. of Aaron. Mm. Mm -hmm and of the anointing of his sons. So there is an anointing upon Aaron, mm. and there is an anointing upon his sons. And God is saying, I, God, have taken a portion from the sacrifices. I mm. want you, Pastor, to follow mm. this. Mm. The, sec the portion that God took from the sacrifices, who is bringing the sacrifices, the children of Israel, when they bring the sacrifice mm. to the priest, so that the priest would sacrifice and burn it and lay it on the altar. God is saying, before you can burn the entire kettle, there are certain portions of that sacrifice that you are entitled to. Mm -hmm. And he said, you take this part, the breast, mm -hmm. the leg, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So there are portions there mentioned by God. Mm -hmm. Yes. And God is saying, I have given you these portions. And he tells us why God had to give them those portions. Mm. Right? Yes, Father. Now, you are reading verse number 35. It's saying what? Yes, Father. This is the portion. This is the portion. Mm. Uh -huh. Of the anointing of, of Aaron. The anointing of Aaron and of his sons. So God is saying, I'm the one taking the offering. I am the one taking the money mm -hmm. from the people. Mm -hmm. Because the money that I've taken from the people is for the anointing. So it's a portion for the anointing. Mm -hmm. So what God is saying is, you have the whole God ready to be sacrificed. And God is saying, not every part of the God has to be bent. Mm -hmm. Redeem, <laughs> deliver certain parts of the God because they don't belong to the fire, they belong to the anointing. Hey. Mm. So God is saying, I will pay you, Aaron, and your sons according to the anointing. So it is the anointing upon your lives that qualifies you for the portion. Aye. When everything else is bent, mm. Mm. maybe somebody is listening to me right now. Yes. We may be going through a very serious recession, mm. right? When everything else is getting consumed by whatever we see mm. happening. Aye. But everything that God is going to spare, he will spare it for the reason of the anointing that is upon your life mm. as a child of God. Now listen to something very, very critical here. So, what God is getting from the altar, delivering it from the fire, mm. he's saying this cannot be consumed because it's an allocation mm. 
mm. which is meant for the anointing upon mm. my people. Yes. So you must understand now, wow. when God blesses you, mm. when God gives you a portion from the sacrifice, mm. what God is giving to you is not being given to you. God is not giving you money. <laughs> God is not giving a car to you. God is not giving a house to you. <laughs> God is giving the house to the anointing. Oh. This is the portion of the anointing, the way there is for the anointing mm. or to the anointing. Mm. So God gets something very physical and then he gives it to you, not really to you, but to the anointing. So now you are being qualified to receive. Because whatever God is going to give, he's never going to give it to you. He's going to give it to the anointing and then you have the anointing. Because you carry the anointing and God gives whatever he gives to the anointing that you carry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then when people find you, driving, mm -hmm. they can never investigate and find the reason why you're driving. Mm -hmm. The car was never given to you. It was given to the anointing. This is the portion of the anointing mm -hmm. of Aaron and of the anointing upon his children. There are things that God has given that I have and those things were never given to me. Hey. Those things were given to an anointing that I carry. Wow. You see why you should have an anointing? Mm. Because things that you are not qualified for, you now have the anointing in the inside of you that is qualified for those things. Mm. And God may say no to you, but he cannot say no to the anointing. Mm. I don't know if what I'm saying is making sense. So much sense, Father. Thank you. So there is a portion, the reason why God wanted kings to be anointed, it is because there is a portion of wisdom which should then be given to the anointing and then having a king with that kind of an anointing, then the king will end up having access to that kind of wisdom. Mm, mm, mm. Uh, how dangerous it is for the CEO, how dangerous it is for the king, for the manager of any business not to have an anointing upon his life. The reason why the prophet had to anoint kings. It was so that there would be a reason upon the king for the wisdom to follow. The uh, wisdom that would have not followed the king now follows the king because the wisdom has become the portion for the anointing. Mm. How dangerous it is to have a king who is not anointed. Mm. When the king is not anointed, when a businessman is not anointed, because what God would have wanted to give you as a portion cannot be given to you because it has to be given to the anointing. Mm. There is wisdom that is required for rulership. And before that wisdom can be given to you, you need to be given an anointing and then the wisdom is given to that anointing. It's a mm. portion mm. for the anointing. Mm. My father, please allow me to ask. You have just explained on the anointing, and please correct me if I'm wrong. Within the anointing, is there the personality of the anointer, number one? And then number two, 
can a person be appointed king without the wisdom that is required for them to run the king's office and when god does that is he doing so with the understanding that the king has the potential to then draw out of the anointed the anointing that is able to make them run the office okay i'll try to answer maybe just two quick you you asked three questions i'll try to answer for now just two thank you thank you, you said is there the personality of the anointer within the anointing yes why not call the anointing the personality mm. so that you don't further confuse yourself mm. because when you you want to find the personality within the anointing then you are separating the anointing from the personality mm. how god anointed jesus of mm. nazareth with the holy ghost mm. <laughs> <laughs> that personality is the anointing mm. Mm. when i anoint a person i have shared my personality with him mm. you are entitled to the prophetic grace mm. when it is the prophet that is anointing you mm. that anointing that is coming upon your life it is not within the anointing the anointing is the personality the personality is that anointing mm. how god anointed jesus <laughs> with the holy ghost so what god used was not oil he took the personality and smeared the personality of the holy ghost mm. upon jesus then he went about doing good by reason of the personality of the holy ghost wow so what you need now to understand here is exactly what is happening to you when you are being anointed mm. I will tell you something that the anointing does that most people don't know. The body of Christ doesn't have this knowledge. Let me show you something. Some people think that the anointing only helps me to become better. The anointing really helps you to become better. I will answer a very big question that most people listening to me today have especially men of God oh. Have you ever asked yourself this question why is it that you may find yourself today after being born again struggling to deal with certain behaviors certain feelings certain scenes that you you never used to struggle with those mm. before you got born again and now you're struggling and you are wondering but, but how come You know I know of people who have sort of like become more sinful mm. after being born again than even before. Maybe you've never asked that question. You, you, you guys you are you are, yeah, you, have, you are we holy. Have, <laughs> we, have, we have we have we have we have asked this question. Yes, you see there are people that are struggling today. And they begin to question 
am I really born again? Indeed. Indeed. Why is it that I seem to be sinning more mm. yes. after I'm born again than before? Yes. Okay. What they don't understand is that there was no reason for them to struggle with sin before being born again. They don't understand that struggling with sin actually is a sign that you're born again. Mm. If you're not born again, you don't struggle with sin. Mm. Oh, wow. Okay? That's a lifestyle when you're not born again. Mm. So be, before you get to that point where you condemn yourself completely and say, so I'm not born again because I'm struggling with sin. Struggling with sin is proof that you're born again. Born again. Mm. If you're not born again, you don't struggle. Mm. It's a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle. Number two, which is very, very important. This part is very, very important. You interact with men of God. I don't know if that, that teaching should be delivered today. <laughs> oh, no, that part, let me, let me leave it for now. Please, let me leave it for now. Please, please, help, us. Yes. please help us. Let's come back to the anointing. When the prophet anoints a king, there was a time when Elisha mm -hmm. wanted to anoint Jehu. So that Jehu would become the king of Israel. Now, he wasn't anointed only so that he becomes the king of Israel. He was anointed to destroy mm. the house of his master, Ahab. Uh -huh. And Joram was reigning at that time. That's Second Kings chapter number 9. That's, that's where you find the story in chapter 9 of the book of Second Kings. You can read that by yourself. Okay. But listen to this, this, there is something very crucial about that. The prophet then sent a younger prophet mm -hmm. and he said, I want you to go mm -hmm. to Ramoth Gilead. When you get there, I want you to call out Jehu mm -hmm. and then anoint him with this oil mm -hmm. and tell him that you'll be the king of Israel. Mm -hmm. And he gave to this young prophet a script. I, I just want to present something here, so let me try to, to be as calm as possible. Anoint him to be king of Israel, and then he gave him what to say, because the anointing in itself was not enough. Hmm. He had to anoint Jehu and tell him the reason for the anointing, because every anointing Mm. is for a specific assignment. You are anointed for something. Mm. Whether you're going to become an engineer and you'll never go to church, still you require an anointing for engineering. This is what makes this sermon relevant mm. and necessary for everyone. Hear this. You anoint him and you tell him the reason why he's anointed. Mm -hmm. So this anointing is for this assignment. Mm -hmm. And the young man went to Ramoth Gilead and then he found Jehu sitting in the midst of the people, other army generals. Mm -hmm. Exactly what Elisha had said. Go there, before you anoint him, call out from his brethren. That was already prophetic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Elisha knew that at the time of your arrival, he is not in bed. Mm -hmm. You will find him surrounded by other people. Yes. But before you anoint him, separate him. Mm -hmm. You see how I've separated this oil mm -hmm. from the rest of the oil. Yes. yes separate him first and then anoint him mm. and tell him that God has placed this anointing upon you so that you can become king of Israel and you destroy you are anointed to work against mm. that was an anointing mm. to work against mm. Mm. It, 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 it calls for an anointing to work against I think this would be something very, very important for every opposition party mm. 
everywhere in every country there's an opposition party mm. yes unless you have the anointing to oppose your opposition will never be fruitful mm. you see jehu was given an anointing to oppose yes the prevailing scenario politically and mm. he was given that anointing even by the prophet for him to become successful mm. Mm. Imagine the king himself requires an anointing the one to oppose him also requires an anointing Now let's talk about something here very very important so you can have a person who is more anointed to come and oppose your anointing even in the market if you are going to be doing business you will encounter people with greater anointing mm-hmm. that will take over the market from you that will take over clients and you will be wondering but i started this mm-hmm. somebody with a great anointing has risen mm-hmm. we are always anointed on a daily basis to override each other mm-hmm. and become the best mm-hmm. now let me let me let me present something here i want people to understand this this If you don't get this you're never going to get anything else. This is key. Mm. The anointing was placed upon Jehu and Jehu from that place he came back outside. He was anointed in a secret place mm. then he came out. Mm. And now they were asking Jehu what happened to you and he said no you know this guy just came here he was and they said no 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 something has happened to you. Mm. He said no, nothing happened to me. They said no mm. no 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 because once you're anointed mm. it will be easy for people to recognize the anointing mm-hmm. they will see that there is an anointing upon your life mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. until he had to declare it publicly that i have that anointing the same way jesus declared he has anointed me mm-hmm. he said i've been anointed to be king and right from that moment they began to celebrate him from there he took his horse and his generals straight to the palace Now as they were going to the palace the bible says that there was a watchman mm. who would always look over the city to see if enemies are coming mm. and then they saw I want to tell you something that the anointing does cannot do and then this watchman was looking and he saw that hey there is a group of people that is coming mm. and he said to Joram I'm seeing there is a company of people approaching and Joram said send a messenger to go and inquire and then a messenger was sent from the city when the messenger got to Jehu the messenger asked Jehu I've been sent by the king to ask is there peace mm. and Jehu said what is it that you know about peace mm. you know nothing about peace and jeho said you join me join the queue mm-hmm. and then he kept on coming and then the the watchman said i've seen the messenger the messenger has arrived but i'm not seeing him coming back mm-hmm. he has joined the company and joram said send another messenger and another messenger was sent mm-hmm. he asked the same question jeho is there peace and he mm-hmm. said what what do you know about peace mm-hmm. join me And the watchman said even the second one has arrived but I'm I'm not seeing him coming back. Mm. That is when now Joram said what else are you seeing? Then the watchman the watchman get this now the watchman looked closely. And he said I think this is Jeho. and he gave the reason why he th- suspected Jehu. Mm-hmm. He said because the way he is driving he drives like a madman. <laughs> he drives so furiously that's that's how he explained. <laughs> you, you if you look at that word it's he drives like a madman. Then Joram knew that this was Jehu. How? By the way he was driving. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But here is where the revelation is. Mm-hmm. This man used to drive like a madman. 
before he was anointed. Mm. And even after he was anointed. So the anointing never helped him improve. Mm. It's, it's like, okay, okay, <laughs> okay. okay. Mm. <laughs> look at this. Because most people, they are wondering why are they not doing better in business, mm. yet they've just been anointed. There is an anointing upon you that when it, that anointing comes, it doesn't improve you. You see, the Jehu before the anointing, he drives like a madman. The Jehu after the anointing, mm. still the way he's driving. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm. They are men of God, highly anointed. They can cure the sick, but still they can't drive. Mm. Very true. Marriages can still break mm -hmm. with the anointing. <laughs> we, in the presence of the anointing, because mm. it is not for driving. But if you are going to become a professional driver, then you require an anointing <laughs> for that specific assignment. Mm. 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 <sighs> Why is your life not becoming better after you've just been anointed? Mm. It is because when you anoint a fool, he becomes an anointed fool. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the reason then for the anointing? Yes, Father. <laughs> <laughs> that becomes the biggest question. <laughs> The anointing is then what qualifies you for the portion. Okay. Okay. When the portion now comes after you are anointed, you have a right now to receive a portion. When you anoint a king, <laughs> it is not the oil that is going to make him a king. There must be the king, within the king. Then when you put the oil upon the king, mm. now the wisdom that is required by the king gets to him mm. because it is following an anointing. It's a portion for the anointing. Yeah. It is a portion for the anointing. Mm. All right. Mm. So when I anoint you, mm. I should say, mm. Elisha said, anoint him and say to him. Mm. All right? Mm. So when I anoint you, you must then begin to follow me. Mm -hmm. And you listen to what I'm going to say. Mm -hmm. Because you may have the anointing and not know what that anointing is for until you hear me say. Mm. This is why after... Samuel had anointed Saul, he would still make a fall up and tell him what to do. Mm. Okay. Mm. 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 Okay. Mm. Oh, my. Mm. See something here. What you are hearing me say today, what is qualifying you for this information is the anointing. Thank you. Everything that I'm saying now, it's a portion for the anointing that you have. Mm. Not many people can listen to what I'm saying now and make sense out of it. Mm. Why? Because what I'm saying, it's a portion for the anointing that you carry. <laughs> mm. So after you are anointed, you have to receive information. Get educated in the things of the Spirit. Mm. You have to be educated now in the things of the Spirit for that anointing to begin to function. Yeah. All right. If I anoint your physical body, mm -hmm. you know what I'm doing? I'm realizing that the man inside the spirit has an anointing. Where did he get the anointing from? When he got born again. Mm. How? By receiving Jesus, who is the Christ. The Christ is the anointing. So the man within you is anointed. Mm. But when I, I anoint this body, mm. what I'm doing is I'm perforating this physical body. Mm. Okay? The anointing that then becomes the bridge. It's an opening mm. on your flesh. 
that allows the inward man to be able to express himself. Okay? Yes. I, I, I hope some people are following this. Yes. It's a bridge. Mm -hmm. Because I want you to run over. I want the inner man to escape mm. from the trap of this flesh. I anoint you physically. Mm. And the inside man will use those areas where you've been anointed to come out and you have an overflow. Now, when, when you receive an anointing, like I've said, David said, thou anointest my head and then my cup runs off. Mm. The anointing that touches your head is very important. Mm. And by having the anointing on your head, you're having the anointing on your brains. Mm. What happens first is this. Listen to me. We have to educate the inner man. Convert the inner man, make him born again, and we equip him, we give him knowledge. All the careers that you can think of, you want to become this, you want to become that, all that is never given to the flesh. It is given to the spirit man. Mm. It is the spirit man who becomes the medical doctor. But the physical man has to be subdued. Mm. When we anoint the physical man, mm. we are sort of like suppressing the physical man, opening him up so that the spirit man with better ideas can come out and manifest. Mm. Now, when I give you that anointing, I'm giving you what I've used myself. Mm. I can... I can release the spirit man within me at will and perform the supernatural that you, you may not be able to do. It's true, and you think that my anointing is greater than your anointing. But the issue here is I have found a way of bypassing the flesh mm. and still be able to allow the inner man to achieve whatever he wants to achieve mm. and not have the flesh as a limitation, but now have the flesh as, a, as, a, as an advantage. Mm. So, you must be anointed physically so that the flesh can give permission to the spirit. You must be anointed also spiritually so that the spirit man can be equipped it is the equipping of the spirit man. Mm. Now, when a prophet anoints you mm. for an assignment, and then he tells you how the anointing is going to work, it means when you take that anointing from him, you have taken his personality. Mm. You are entitled mm. to prophetic ideas. Mm. You will make decisions that are prophetic. Mm. Mm. And people will wonder, how did you know? Mm. What made you not to invest in that company? Mm. And yet everything else was promising. Mm. And you say, no. What made you to sell those shares on time? Mm. It is the prophetic that is coming from the one who anointed you. Mm -hmm. So if you are a king and you get anointed, you are entitled to wisdom mm -hmm. that is required for proper governance. So there is an anointing for everything that you want to do. But now the problem we have is that we We think that by going to church, by praying so hard, and maybe by fasting, I'm going to become better physically. That's what we think. That's true. <laughs> and yet, you know, prayer, fasting, 
must simply be a cultivation of the actual seed mm. Mm. which mm. is the word mm. you must have the word mm. and then when the word is planted within you then you can put the fertilizer which is the prayer mm. but imagine putting the fertilizer into the ground and there is no seed many people that are praying today you can drive from here even during this lockdown some are in mountains right now they are praying mm-hmm. very true and i can ask you you can do this i'm not undermining prayer probably maybe i pray more than all of those guys mm. Mm. but go there now and interview them you will be shocked at their level of ignorance mm. concerning the word most of those people t- t- take your bible you will find him with his own bible there but they don't understand the word mm. Yet prayer was supposed to be according to the word. The fertilizer is supposed to be according to the seed. Mm. Mm. It's not enough for you to just keep on praying. Mm. You have to pray. The Bible declares that you have to war according to prophecy. Mm. Mm. Ha. information the truth is what sets us free i said this 3 days ago mm, mm, mm. the information mm. is what sets you the truth mm. that you know is what sets you free mm. there is a need for everyone listening to me to receive an anointing yes whether you go to church or you don't you still need an anointing But this anointing when it begins to work you have to give it permission. Mm. Okay? Something that I wanted to explain I said I will not touch on that mm. today because it's too sensitive. I will have to come back and touch on that. It's extremely sensitive. When we come back and then I touch on it you agree with me that ah sure. Indeed it was. Yeah. So I will leave that part for today but look at this part. When you are anointed when you have Jesus. Yeah. He will not force you to do anything. Mm-hmm. He is a very gentle spirit. Now, what happens now is you now begin to investigate. That's how the anointing begins to work, like myself. I when I received him the first evidence before i could feel free that now i am free now i am forgiven information became my obsession i began to search for the truth when you have the truth you begin to search for it mm. that's proof that you have found the truth wow. when you have the truth you begin to search for it yes mm. when you find the truth Mm. you begin to hunger more for it. Mm. That's proof that you have found the truth. Wow. You, 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 you have to begin to investigate everything because most people they don't understand spiritual things. You know, remember pastor I think five days ago you remember there was another pastor we were talking and this pastor was sharing his dream mm, mm. and the pastor said how do you interpret dreams like that he had actually had me interpret another person's dream mm, mm. and he realized that this is an opportunity and he said i also had a dream yesterday but my dream was very very strange mm, mm. he said i don't know how to explain it but what happened was i went to bed 
Then, in a dream, I realized that there was a fire, right? Mm. He said yes. there was fire That's in fire. the house. Yes. Then he had to take the blanket, try to cover the fire so that mm. he would quench the fire. Mm. And then he woke up. He didn't, he didn't know the meaning of, the, of that dream. Of the dream, yes. Then he went back to sleep. Mm. Then I think early in the morning, maybe around five mm. or around mm. four, mm. the mm. wife then went back to the sitting area. Then she discovered that the, the gas heater mm. was on. So they didn't switch it off hmm. from the previous night. Hmm. So the whole night, right. it was very, very close again to the couch. Hmm. Hmm. So she went into the bedroom and then she told the husband that, ah, you know, I think children just forgot to switch off, hmm. to switch off the heater. So it was on throughout the night. This is a gas hmm. heater. So he was telling me that, you know, I had that dream. Is it, isn't there a way of knowing immediately? Because God had told me. Mm -hmm. And the, the only way I got to know that this was real was when now my wife was telling me in the morning. Yes, yes. But I could see that he was at least happy. Mm. that the house was not burned. Mm. Mm. He was happy that at least he saw something that was confirmed immediately, mm -hmm. that mm. his dream was accurate, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay? Mm. But I, I tried to open up his eyes and I said to him, I hope you are going to understand this perspective. Mm. I said to him, Do you know that had you found the heater off in the morning, you were never going to consider that dream as an accurate dream? Mm. Indeed. I said to him, I want everyone to listen to this. <laughs> it's yes. very important. Yeah. Had your wife found the heater already off, you were never going to celebrate that dream. Mm. The reason why you're saying it is true, it is accurate, is because there was a confirmation by the heater that was on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you're crying now to God to say, had I known that's what you want, and you think that's the highest level, no. that's an inferior level. And I said, your problem is this. Imagine in a dream, there was fire, and you tried to use your blanket to quench the fire, mm -hmm. right? If you were going to be successful in that dream, in quenching the fire, then your wife in the morning was not supposed to find the heater still mm. on. Mm. Mm. Yes. <laughs> but had you found the heater off, you were never going to celebrate the dream. I know. I'm telling him of a certain dimension in the spirit where you dream. And whatever you do in that dream, becomes a reality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You are finding the fire still on in the morning. You having tried to quench the fire in the dream. Mm -hmm. And you are celebrating the dream because to you it is an accurate dream. Mm -hmm. But had you been very effective in quenching the fire in a dream, you must have gone, gotten to a level now where you can even switch off that heater in a dream and what your wife would have found in the morning was a switched off heater that your children left on. Mm. It's a high level where you can do things spiritually and you can see the impact and the results 
taking place physically. Mm. And I'm saying to him now, I'm trying to push him to another level. At least he has graduated. Mm. You're at a level where you have seen it. Mm. And then early in the morning, there's a confirmation and you're so happy about it. And I'm mm. saying, no, you can go further than that. Mm. Where you see something in a dream and you deal with it in a dream, mm. when you come back to this physical dimension, mm. you no longer have to expect your dream to materialize. Hey. Mm. Yes. I, I don't know if what I'm saying is, is, is helping you. <sighs> you can stop death in a dream. You can I receive. find a career in a dream and wake up with it. The wisdom that Solomon got, <laughs> he got it in a dream. Mm. And early in the morning, the women that came Mm-hmm. was just so that mm-hmm. he would see that it wasn't just a dream. This was a reality. Mm-hmm. Oh my God. Mm-hmm. Seeing something in the spirit and then you get a hold of it and you bring it back mm-hmm. into the earth dimension. Yes. The anointing can do that. So he was so much mm-hmm. surprised this person. I said, I'm sorry, I'm happy about this dimension. I thought, I said, that's not the ultimate. The ultimate mm-hmm. is that you were supposed to be able to quench that fire. Mm-hmm. In that, because you were using a blanket mm-hmm. to do what? Yeah. So you're celebrating a failure. Hey. hey, hey. We must be able to do things that will leave a mark in the physical. Mm. So this anointing is going to fall on somebody. I see. I see. You, you have to understand this. If you're watching me, you have to follow what I'm saying and what I'm doing. This anointing is going to rest on somebody. Well, you will be able to achieve things that other people have to go to universities to achieve. And from a spiritual dimension, you can be taught by the anointing. I can place an anointing upon you and say things over you. Mm. And an assignment can be birthed. Yes. You can't have an anointing and say, I have nothing to do. Mm. It's impossible. Mm. Because the anointing is for doing something. You're anointed to perform. Mm. There is a responsibility. There is a burden mm. that God has anointed you for. Now, let me, let me calm down a little bit. Let me calm down a little bit. Just a little bit. We must start searching for the truth. When you have found Jesus, who is the truth, you start searching for the truth. Mm. You don't want to be lied to. I started from that very moment when I realized that I had received Jesus and he had received me. I wanted to investigate everything. What is happening? Mm. When people are being prayed for. Mm. I would sit in the church as a young boy Watch as the elders were praying for the sick. And I would look for changes. Look for people as they were going back, the way they were walking, going to receive a prayer. How they were walking back. And no one was investigating. No one wanted to find out, is there any change? And they kept on doing that. I wanted to investigate. Even a, a sermon, a preaching. I would go back home. Want to find out what that preacher was saying, is it true? Mm. Is it accurate? Mm. The truth is not just the anointing. It is the saying. Receive the anointing and receive the saying. The saying. Mm. The saying. The saying. Let me end there for today. Wow. 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 Father, allow me to take this opportunity to thank you. It gives me hope that there is something within me Mm. that can make me a better person. Mm. I've lived life and there are times when you feel that there is more to me, there is more in me Mm. than what I'm seeing manifest. Mm. And you are coming and you are teaching us about the need for the anointing. And the role of the anointing in my life. Their system, what they've taught us, 
in a certain way is to be self-reliant mm. and despise anything out of yourself. Mm. And then at the same time, they've created a scenario where they try and fight that which is within me that gives me life. Mm. <laughs> and you come and you teach me that there is somebody else who may be anointed more than I am, who is able to pay for it that flesh, that other part of me, mm. that stops the me from manifesting. Mm -hmm. And there is no other arsenal that one can be given if hope is to be given to a person, mm. if a tomorrow is to be given to a person, other than what you have just taught us. Mm. Thank you so, so much, my father. Thank you. Mm. Thank you. Let me do a prayer before I hand over to you. The anointing of your flesh, the activation, Yes. Of your immune system. Yes. The restoration of your antibodies. Yes. yes. In the name of Jesus, everything put within you by God to fight against infections and diseases and viruses, we bring a revival right now in your physical body. And as you are listening to me, you will jump from your bed. Mm. You will begin to walk again. That power within you that brings broken bones together, that ability given to you already by God, Yes. I pray that you will recover yes. from an attack by wicked systems in the world, mm. destroying your inbuilt healthcare system so that you can support and sponsor their business model. I pray that Africa will begin to recover from within. Yes. Everything that was used against our immune system, I pray for the resurrection of the immune system in Africa. In the name of Jesus, I minister health and life. I minister information. Everyone sick, recover right now. Yes, Lord. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Everyone being tormented by evil spirits, be set free. Yes, Lord. Financial bondage, be set free. In the name of Jesus, I pray that as the light will begin to shine, as our leaders are going to make wise decisions, as doors are going to open up, success is going to be waiting for you. You will come out of this solitary place much more equipped and much more informed, much more anointed. Mm. I pray that this anointing will rest upon your spirit. Yes, Lord. To rest upon your flesh. Yes, Lord. And I pray that from this very moment, you as a cup physically, let the inner man come out. Yes. Let your cup overflow. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus, the man within must surround you, protect you from any attack by the enemy. You are covered, you are protected. In the name of Jesus, let things begin to change for good. Whatever they would have wanted to do with you, this is not the season. Mm. We postpone it, yes, Lord. we delay it, yes, Lord. we disrupt it, yes, Lord. we dismantle it. Yes, Lord. Everything they have planned it will not be fulfilled now. In the name of Jesus, we will protect ourselves by protecting the anointing that God has given to us. In the name of Jesus, every child of God, if you can hear the sound of my voice, believe that your body right now has been activated cells that are dead in your body are getting replaced right now. 
in the name of Jesus. Let the flow of your blood be regulated properly right now in the name of Jesus. Whatever entered into your body, the scripture says everything that my father did not plant shall be uprooted. Yes. That disease is not yours. Yes. Refuse it. Yes. Resist it. That poverty is not yours. Mm. Let it be uprooted. Yes. Don't be deceived by people. Don't agree to that. It's a lie. Yes. The disease is not yours. Yes. You are not sick. You are not sick. You are not sick. You are not sick. It is their disease. It is not your disease. Don't be part of this. You are not here to be sick. You are here to glorify the Lord. I shall not die, but I shall live to declare the works of the Lord. In the name of Jesus, enjoy your life. Amen. And I pray for you that as the time comes, soon I'll be meeting with you, Amen. seeing you flourishing like a flower. Yes, Lord. In your Life is going to be at a different height I where you've never it. been before. I receive. The devil thought he was going to destroy your business, but your business is just about to begin. I receive. In the name of Jesus. I receive. More influence. I receive. More connections. Mm. I receive. In the name of Jesus. Mm. Yes. Whatever the devil has taken away from you during this time shall be restored. I receive. In Jesus' mighty name, you are blessed and you are covered mm. in I Jesus' receive. name. I receive. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Father, we are thankful. Mm. And we are so grateful. Mm. Thank you for the powerful ministration, Father. Mm. Thank you. Father, you've shown us that without Jesus, there is no hope. There's no hope for an immune system. There's no hope mentally there. We need him. Mm. Thank you for showing that to us. Mm. Thank you, Father. Thank you so much for today. Thank you for what you have taught us today. Thank you, Thank you Father. Thank you. Oh, wow. Today has been outstanding. The, the two anointings. Thank you so much for being connected today. We've received such powerful ministration from the voice and we have heard the mind of God we have heard the heart of God thank you so much for tuning in today was such a wonderful service powerful ministration from the voice we have heard the mind of God we have heard the heart of God we have received the true light that lighteth the world we have received truth today. We're so grateful. We are eternally grateful. And like we've been encouraged to do by the voice, let us continue praying. Let us continue praying. After this lockdown, we have been, <laughs> we have been promised so much is in store for us. So much that the Lord has in store for us straight after. Thank you so much once again. We are so grateful for what God has given to us today. Until we meet again next time. Shalom.